I'm Brett Smith, owner of Whitetail Land Management Services, and this is the Campfire Chronicles. All right, guys, so here on the Campfire Chronicles, sometimes we'll tell stories. Uh, sometimes we'll, uh, we'll talk about controversial topics, surprise, surprise, or sometimes we'll be informative. Tonight, we're going to be informative. Uh, hunting in hill country, it can be a real pain in the butt. If you've never hunted hill country, if you don't understand topo maps, that's a step you're going to have to take before, you know, watching this video. But nonetheless, when you do figure out how topo works, how topo maps work, there's going to be certain features that are going to funnel deer and pinch deer down into certain areas. With that being said, there are probably four different types of topo features that I like to focus on for the most part. Are they the only ones? No. But... I've killed bucks on pretty much every single one of these topo features in hill country and after hunting hill country I've almost learned to love hill country more than the flat ground just because of basically the way the topography funnels a lot of these deer. So the first one that I really want to go over and it's probably the hardest to find is a saddle. So saddles, the most simple way I can explain saddles are all the topo lines run in from four pretty much directions. Um, they run into four directions, and where they do intersect, they create a flat spot. All those topo lines, deer will generally travel the topo lines. They don't want to go up. They don't want to go down. They'll stay on the same elevation. And so eventually, there's an intersecting point where sometimes these, um, all these topo lines intersect, and there's a flat spot. That's called a saddle. So a saddle is one of the best spots you can be hunting during the rut, um, or anytime you can correlate some sort of bedding and food pattern. If you see a saddle in between, focusing on these saddles is probably one of my favorites. One of my next favorites would have to probably be the ridge point. This is a very simple one once you figure out um, once you figure out how to read topo maps. I like to focus on ridge points just because bucks in hill country generally like to bed on leeward ridges. What does that mean? Okay so let's say that we have in this case on this map a northwest wind Basically, that deer would most likely be bedded facing south with a northwest wind coming over his back. Why would he be doing that? Because basically, he could see everything below him, down below on the ridge, and he could smell everything behind him. A lot of times when bucks are pressured, you'll find them doing this because they have to use every single one of their senses in order to keep themselves alive, obviously. So ridge points are another big thing that I like to focus on when it comes to strategic buck bedding. The next one that I want to focus on would be the top of draws. Okay, so the top of draws right here basically are a great pinch point. So these draws get so steep, especially in hill country and in, in, in topography, that they don't want to go down and they don't want to have to come back up the other side. Like, a, like I said, they're a lot like a human. They don't want to have to, they don't want to have to take that super treacherous hike if they don't have to. They don't want to go up and they don't want to go down. They want to stay on the same elevation. So in order to stay on that same elevation, they would have to go up and around the top of these draws. These draws coming out of the bottoms and eventually coming up towards the top. At, at some point, there will be a flat spot there where they can cross over and come back down on the other side of that draw. Those are great intersecting points. Once again, if you were to sit on some of these really steep, narrow draws where deers, deer won't cut through the middle of them, if you sat there for the entire week during a rut, chances are eventually dumb luck will kick in and you'll have something pass by. So it's up to you at that point to really you know, take advantage of that opportunity. The last one and probably one of my favorites that I have killed bucks on is what I call the dog bone bench. So the dog bone bench, um, for the most part, generally jets off of those top thirds of those ridges. So the, off of those ridge points that we talked about earlier, you'll get a dog bone bench. And what a dog bone bench is, it's almost like a ridge finger itself. But, but it's, it's kind of got that, it looks more, it looks like a dog bone. It's a flat spot. And a lot of times where you get these flat spots in hill country, especially on the top thirds of these ridges, these are natural intersecting points. Just based off of reading topo maps, reading topo maps and hunting some of these dog bone benches, I've killed some of the deer that I have on the wall right now. I think I have a 12 or a 13 pointer that I've killed off my first sit in this location, just strictly off of reading topo maps. So basically in hill country, Deer are lazy, like I've said, they want to cross over those flat spots. They don't want to go up and down. A dog bone bench is another you know, great topo feature that I like to hunt. So all together, those are the four that I really try to focus on. Are there others? Yes. Is there other way to kill deers in hill country? Yes. But these are the four main ones that I focus on when it comes to killing mature bucks. 